What is up guys, welcome back to my channel. In this episode of Any Swift Tips, we will be having a look at how you can protect your app from being exploited on a jailbroken devices. We'll start today by looking at how you can detect that your app is running on a jailbroken phone by performing a couple of file system checks. The basic idea behind these checks is that on jailbroken environments, some, file, some files exist that are not present on a non-jailbroken devices. So, if you're interested, please continue watching. Alright guys, so here we are on my computer. Uh, let me first explain to you what we are seeing. This here is the screen of my jailbroken iPhone. As you can see, I have Cydia installed. Uh, if you're wondering uh, on what iOS version I am, it's an iPhone 5C running the latest iOS that it supports, 10.3.3. Uh, it's running the Helix jailbreak. Uh, so, uh, and this thing here, it's his root file system. So when it comes to file checks, what exactly is different on a jailbroken iPhone than a standard iPhone? First, as you can see, we have the Cydia app. So you can find it quickly under application Cydia. And in your uh, Swift projects, if you check whether this di directory exists, uh, it's a dead giveaway that you're, you're running on a jailbroken device. That's the first hint. However, sometimes developers are hiding away these things. So you may have a jailbroken iPhone without having the CD app installed. So let's continue with the other things that are specific to jailbroken phones. So something else that is available only on the jailbroken phones is under the bin directory this bash executable, the bash terminal. Now, uh, as you can see here, I am logged in in my iPhone and that's because of the bash and the SSH server that is running on it. So you could search for these things too in order to recognize a job broken setup. Uh, another file that is common for jailbroken phones only is under the directory etc apt this is the manager with which all jailbroken software like software designed specifically for jailbroken iPhones is installed similar to uh, the Debian Unix systems uh, let's say Ubuntu runs the same way they have packet managers, so this is how Cydia installs all the software that is not from the App Store. Right, something else uh, that is common again. Uh, sometimes you could find a version of apt, apt related files again in private var lib c. Here you have the apt directory again, Cydia. So these are dead giveaways that you're running on a jailbroken phone. Uh, and that's uh, as much as I have uh, researched into, into it when it comes to file checking. So now let's go to Xcode and create a new project. I'll make a single view application just like but any other iOS app template will do. I'll call it jailbreak file system checks like this. And so how we'll check for these files. First, let me type them in really quickly. Uh, let's say I'll make a new file called jailbreak checks and I'll quickly type in here 
all the directories that we would like to check in for. Okay, so these are the directories that we would like to check. And if we find something stored in the file system for these locations, then it's sure that we're running on a jailbroken phone. However, if we don't find any of these, we can't confirm that the phone is not jailbroken. So let's implement some methods that will check for these things. Alright guys, so I have typed in a simple function that will perform these file system checks. Uh, I forgot to mention one other important part of file system checks. It's about this uh, directory library mobile substrate. Mobile substrate, for those of you who don't know, it's a framework that is common dynamic framework that helps sideload code into applications and processes in jailbroken environments. So it's a pretty common thing in on jailbroken setups. All of them have it. And as you can see on my jailbroken phone in the file system, when I go in library, I have mobile substrate. And in it, yeah, in it I don't have anything. So maybe that's due to the fact that mobile substrate was renamed to cds substrate in the recent versions of the jailbreak i'm not really sure but let's have this in mind too because in other setups let's say if your app runs on ios 8 it's still it will still be mobile substrate so have this check it's better to check against it instead of skipping it and potentially running your code into on jailbroken setups. So these are the files. Why the function is inlined? It's because when you call it on multiple uh, places in your code, you want it to be part of the body of the functions that call it. That way it will be harder for attackers to patch it because if you have it defined in a function somewhere, someone could open your binary uh, in uh, disassembler and knob out all of the instructions the whole region of the function and so that it won't do anything and the check will or let's say overwrite it to return every time true or false you know that it's not run on a jailbroken phone and we don't want that so yeah let's run this on our phone now and see what will happen i'll first run it on a jailbroken phone and let's observe what will happen all right so this is how we'll check it out remember that's the jailbroken phone let's look at it here So the app runs and the state is jailbroken returns true. So at least one of these files is found. Let's run it again on a standard phone, non jailbroken, and see what will happen. Okay, so here is my non jailbroken phone. It runs and it says is jailbroken false this phone by the way is iphone xr running ios 12.1.4 i think and yeah it's not jailbroken and uh, file check is passing okay guys so i have connected back my jailbroken phone again and uh, I wanna, I want to tell you something more about this file checks. So, if if we go to this function here, you could see that we're calling the string straight away like that in a regular format as a local variables in a function. However, this 
is a dead giveaway for an attacker if he uh, e examines our binary, our compiled binary. If he sees these things, he will know for sure that we are checking for jailbroken environments. And he could easily find uh, uh, where we are using this and patch out our functions. Let me show you how he can do that, what I mean by this. Let's compile a binary. Okay, so I have built a binary. Let's go and have a look at the file. Show package contents. This is our executable file. If we open it in Hopper, the disassembler, or any other disassembler, it really doesn't matter. Most of them are good enough for these things. If you open it there, look what we'll be able to find. So, let's go to strings and see these strings. Application Cydia, mobile substrate, bin bash, user as bin SSH. All of these strings are easily visible and an attacker can go here. This is the function in which they are called. So if he double clicks there, he will find the function. Here's the function. Jailbreak file system checks is jailbroken. And so by only by these strings one could easily recognize what this whole procedure is doing. So it starts you know it starts from here. Here it is, the first address. And it goes all the way down all the way down here. And with this pop, the function finishes and goes back to the last address from where it was called. So if someone could just select this region and nop out the whole region. Uh, for those of you who don't know, nop is assembly instruction that does nothing. So it just passes without performing any tasks. If this happens, our whole check is, is gone. Uh, he could just return uh, the value true or false and our check is, is gone. And that's when that happened again, just because we were able to see these things. Uh, for and, and now you can say, okay, but didn't you inline the function? How, why do you have it defined like this? Uh, it's true that I have uh, added this hint for the compiler to inline it. However, these are called compiler optimizations and all compiler optimizations Xcode uh, uh, executes them and like does builds with optimizations only if they are release builds and you could switch your builds to be the book or release from here but the release builds have the compiler optimizations on the debug builds don't have them on by default. So um, that's why we have the function and there's one more thing to it too. Not all, all functions and not always this function will be inlined. It is because sometimes uh, that not sometimes but always that's just a hint to the compiler he doesn't have to uh, conform conform to it uh, we're just hinting uh, him and saying hey uh, you know build try to inline this function if it's possible however there are functions that uh, the compiler really can't inline for example 
functions that are recursive and that they call themselves m multiple times how could uh, a compiler inline such a function he doesn't he don't know when it will end so your computer may run out of memory and still not being able to make everything in a single assembly procedure that's why we are still seeing these what can we do about it how can we hide ourselves better well the first thing that we could do is we could try and obfuscate these strings we can just leave out uh, cdia dot up in our string segment in the binary we can just leave out this to mobile substrate bin bash etsy apt all of these are dead giveaways that we're doing some sort of checks so what what is the easiest way for us to hide these things we can encode them in let's say base 64 format so that they don't mean anything when they're stored we're just gonna see a bunch of nonsense but we'll know that if we decode this in base 64 we'll get these strings out so uh, watch me what i'll do and you'll get the idea now so these strings we want them to be encoded in base 64 and stored uh, in their encoded form and we'll make a method that will first decode these strings before it uses them here and that way we won't have these stored directly cool let's do that now I'll first gonna add a file that will contain the uh, encodings for the strings okay so here uh, here are our methods for working with base64 strings so if I have let's say I could say to base64 and I could store it but let me let me do something else here so uh, let's put a breakpoint here and run the program okay so now we could convert these strings to base64 to their base64 version like this and so now i could just store this like that and if i say from base64 and you see it returns back the original string so I could just swap out this so that it's that's the thing that is stored in our binary and then I can call from base64 and this will get me back that string okay let's do the same thing for the rest okay so I have done exactly that I have found the base64 strings for all of them and now I'm conver converting them back from base64 and it's all fine now let's look at the, that thing now in uh, hopper again to see what's the difference i'll build it one more time okay so the, pro the app is built let's show it in finder again and examine the package content if i drag this to hopper but let me first close my original file Just this one now and see our strings are now these ones and by looking at this no one will be able to determine that it's about jailbreaking and you can get as complex as you want here let's say you could even split this in half you can reverse it apply all sorts of transformations as long as you can revert them back to get the original string that would be uh, good to go like it will be enough uh, for for our uh, method to work however I, I think that 
most people won't be able to recognize what we're doing here. I don't know who will be able to guess that this is base64 encoded and you can encode it in let's say something on traditional base 36 let's say or you know some something that it's not common at all no one could guess it so this this drink here is is fine and all the rest are like that however again if I go into labels and search for jailbreak you can clearly see a function that is called jailbreak file system checks so Joe uh, is Joe broken that's the whole name mainly and yeah you can see here that we have the strings and from then you could start guessing also oh, maybe you know he's doing these checks and stuff so yeah we have to be careful about that uh, and our next step now is to hide these things too and if you see base 64 somewhere again like being called from the jailbroke setup with this parameter string you could again guess what is happening so uh, in addition to these complications here you should also rename the functions names to be something that doesn't have any meaning or it's like completely different it has nothing to do with uh, the process that it does so if you were to rename these let's say instead of being from base 64 to be something like like that then this uh, it's, co it's called code, of code obfuscation and by doing this you're making it harder again for attackers no one will be able to spot it that quickly but uh, if you also uh, name mango this thing like that let's say then you have you won't be able to find strings about jailbreaking in your assembly and this will make the lives of an attacker of the attackers really hard so always obfuscate these functions and write nice comments about them so that the users of these functions will know exactly what they do because these names are horrible I mean even when you have the code even if you're using it it's it's not comfortable i mean everyone will look at it and will be like who did this like that's insane insanity but there's a reason to it there is a reason because otherwise it's clearly visible here and uh, someone could just come and patch the instructions save the binary sign it somehow I won't tell you how you can but you can resign binaries again and you can execute it on on the iOS device so that's not cool mm. next time we'll have a look into some other checks that you can do in addition to file system checks for your broking environments thanks for your watching guys I hope this information was helpful to you in the next video, we will continue our exploration on jailbroken devices. So if you want to get notified about it, consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the next video. Bye bye.